Welcome to Nostalgia Tech Lounge, probably the most nostalgic tech channel on YouTube. Before we start, I wanted to thank you all for the amazing reception of my first two videos. The response blew away all my expectations. I'm incredibly grateful for all your kind words. It really motivates me to make more awesome videos for you. You all are wonderful. Since you loved the topic of joke apps so much, I decided to talk today about a similar family of software that used to be just as fun and popular. Desktop toys for Windows. If you've been a computer user in the 90s, you most likely remember. The cat that would chase your mouse cursor. The sheep that jumped between your open windows. The app that would make it snow all over your desktop. Or that funny purple gorilla that turned out to be the biggest traitor of its class. Maybe those weren't the most productive applications out there, but surely they brought a lot of enjoyment to an otherwise boring and grey desktop and it's kind of sad that they are no longer as popular as they used to be over 20 years ago. For this video I chose 8 desktop toys that I found the most memorable, fun and worth checking out. Let's get nostalgic! We will start with what was one of my first ever experiences with a Windows 95 PC, Neko. Also commonly known as Neko 95. Its history dates back to the 80s, where it was originally written for the NEC PC 9801. It was later ported to Macintosh in 1989 by Kenji Goto, who also designed the sleeping graphics for Neko. Before it found its way to Windows 95, it was ported to a bunch of other platforms, including Windows 3.1, Next Step, Acorn Computers, and the X windowing system. The source code for the X version served David Harvey as a backbone of the Windows 95 port. Neko is incredibly simple. It chases your mouse cursor around your desktop. Once Neko finally catches its prey, it starts its grooming ritual and quickly falls asleep right next to your mouse. It will keep on snoozing for as long as your mouse cursor stays still. Once you finally move your mouse away, the fun starts again. My favorite thing about Neko is that it stays hidden behind your open windows, so that it doesn't distract you from your work at hand. During my first ever computer lesson, our teacher showed us how to use the mouse and Neko was her proud assistant. Our task was not to let it catch our mouse, which was a brilliant way to teach us 8-year-old kids how to use this novel device. It's still one of my fondest computer memories to this day. ScreenMate Poe, also known as SCM Poe or simply The Sheep, is another famous desktop made for Windows. It's a cute little sheep with purple horns that runs and hops across your open windows. The application is based on a character from Fuji TV's multimedia project Stray Sheep and features numerous character animations from this TV series. Poe is a lively virtual pet. It loves to run and jump around, and if it drops from a great distance, it either comically bounces up like a ping pong ball, or just lands cartoonishly on the taskbar. When it gets tired, it takes a short nap. You can drag it around as you wish and place it on top of any window you want. It can climb up your windows or even get abducted by UFO. You can even feed it by dragging files onto Poe. If the file you drag is a WAV file, Poe will play that sound for you. You can have up to 9 instances of Poe running around at once, interacting with each other. I've managed to find source code for Poe on GitHub, including releases for modern Windows. Link is in the description below. One of my viewers mentioned the Bruce Lee ScreenMate, which was a part of a peculiar ad campaign by Brisk Iced Tea, featuring claymation lookalikes of Bruce Lee, Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra, among many other celebrities. Bruce jumps and runs around your desktop, throwing kicks and punches, sometimes doing his signature scream. Every once in a while he throws a random phrase that is presented as a comic-style bubble above his head. Right-clicking Bruce gives you access to simple commands like punch, kick or get Bruce back on top of his game, which of course involves taking a sip of Brisk. Brisk baby! Aside from being there purely for advertising, this gives you access to even more commands. You've gotta give it to them. Developing an ad that people not only want to play with, 
but also remember very fondly is quite an achievement. Using desktop mates for advertising was quite popular in the late 90s. Another such example is the Granny Screen Mate, designed as an ad for the movie Naughty Professor 2. And if you've seen the Naughty Professor movies, you probably have a clue what Granny might be like. Yeah, as you might have guessed, she's pretty nasty. Granny walks around your desktop, farting, dropping her knickers, and playing with her prosthetic teeth. Fortunately, you can disable the sounds. Granny seems to be using the same codebase as Bruce Lee, as her comic book bubbles and right-click options look identical to Bruce. Using the context menu, you can make her drive around in her cart, perform her nasty shenanigans, or even buy tickets for the movie. Hats off to the marketing team for this. It was a very cool and novel, albeit disgusting, idea compared to modern times, where they would simply shove tons of nasty video pop-up ads to every nook and cranny of whatever content we consume on our smartphones. Let's leave desktop mates alone for a while. Snow for Windows does exactly what it says on the tin, brings a snowfall to your desktop, Christmas trees, Santa Claus and reindeers included. Originally developed by Rick Jensen as a virtual greeting card for Macintosh computers in 1984, it was later ported to X11 in 1993 and later found its way to Windows desktops. The falling snow piles up on top of your windows and taskbar. You can even have blizzards, where strong winds blow the snow sideways. The app has a bunch of configuration options to play with, including the density of the snowfall, the thickness of the snow layers, the types of snowflakes, or the frequency and strength of the wind. You can also choose whether you want to have the Christmas trees or Santa. You can even have Rudolf, the red-nosed gentleman himself, although he's not available in the free shareware version. Surprisingly, turns out you can still buy this app even today, and it works on modern versions of Windows. It's available in Microsoft Store for anyone who wants some winter vibes on their desktop. If you're a Linux guy, you most likely know this one. XIce, originally written for X windowing system, has been later ported to various other platforms, including Microsoft Windows. As you can see, it's a pair of eyes that follow your mouse. On the surface, it seems like a completely useless toy. Turns out it was meant to help you find your mouse cursor on a giant screen where it might get lost very easily, as well as a presentation aid making it easier for your audience to follow what's happening on the screen. Thanks to its popularity, a lot of variants have popped up over the years. My personal favorite is this Mr. Bean one, that also makes various noises whenever you click on his face. Hello! I'm not sure if I would like to have him staring at me all day, but to each their own. The last desktop toy I want to discuss today is the infamous purple gorilla, Bonzi Buddy. For those unfamiliar with the story, Bonzi Buddy was a virtual assistant released by Bonzi Software in 1999. Initial versions featured a green parrot called PD, which was quickly replaced by the signature talking purple gorilla. On the surface, Bonzi Buddy seems like a cute, benign virtual friend that was there to help and entertain us. He could tell us a joke. Why do we call money, right? Because everybody needs it. Sing a song. Johnny Steele has an old smoke He loves a dear little girl. She is the queen of his gas machine. She has his heart in the world. Or play games with us. It also features a calendar where you can enter your appointments and Bonzi will remind you when they are near. He could even read stories using its speech synthesis engine. All of this sounds very innocent and kind-hearted, so why was it so infamous? Little did anybody know at this time that Bonzi Buddy was hiding a sinister secret. It featured a spyware module that would send your private data to Bonzi software servers, which they would use to display pop-up ads on your computer. What's even worse, those weren't just your regular banners. They were disguised as critical system errors, telling you that your computer might be in danger and that you should install more Bonzi software to protect from those threats. Bonzi Buddy would also repeatedly change your browser's homepage to bonzi.com without your consent. Worst of all, it also contained a backdoor that would allow all the malicious software to be installed on your computer. 
Bonzi Software faced a class action lawsuit for malicious behavior of Bonzi Buddy and would later cease to exist, leaving a very nasty legacy behind. Since Bonzi Software servers are no longer in operation, Bonzi Buddy is pretty much harmless today. Although, I probably wouldn't recommend installing on your production machine. Testing it in a virtual machine should be safe. If you want to know more about Bonzi Buddy, Nation Squid made a great 17 minute long video about it that I highly recommend. All desktop toys I discussed today are available for download from my website, retrotechlounge.com. There is a new desktop toys section. What other desktop toys do you remember? I would like to know your stories, please share them in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe and visit my social media. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers!